Hi, my name is Kent Trammell, and I'm currently developing a tutorial course for CG Cookie about creating photorealistic portraits with Blender. And as part of my research, I built an interactive Ecorche model for referencing comprehensive 3D facial anatomy. This project has taught me a lot about the human face. In this video, I want to share with you the top five things I've learned as a result. Number one, fat pads have a major effect on the shape of the face. Typically, the skull and muscles are most commonly referenced when it comes to facial anatomy, and they are, of course, very important, but the fat layer is equally important, yet not referenced as often. In fact, I never remember hearing about the fat layer through college or career. It wasn't until I saw an image from Anatomy for Sculptors that I started to research fat pads and discovered their importance. Fat pads, also called fat compartments, affect the appearance of both age and weight as well. For younger, leaner faces, they play a smaller role since they're tight. However, over time and as weight is gained, they begin to plump and sag, which drastically affects the way a person looks. This was nothing short of a revelation for me, and I'll never look at the face the same way again. Number two, muscles can be misleading by themselves in terms of facial shape. This one complements number one in that some musculature by itself simply does not inform the face like you might expect. For example, the cheek in this area, spreading out from the laugh line toward the zygomatic bone. The surface shape flows this way, following the laugh line in the tear trough. However, when you peel back the skin and look at the muscles in this area, their shapes are perpendicular. The reason is that fat pads form the correct flow, not the muscles. So if musculature is your only guide, this area is going to be very confusing. Same for the chin. The underlying muscles do not form a bulbous chin that we're used to seeing from the outside. It's the mental fat that achieves this shape. Number three, image diagrams are plentiful, but imperfect. I spent a lot of time comparing many diagrams because I quickly realized they weren't all 100% consistent. Some are mislabeled, some are drawn differently, some use a hard Latin while others use a soft Latin, so to speak. For example, this image has the depressor anguli oris muscle labeled wrong, and this one is correct while both have disproportionately shaped mentalis muscles. When searching for the mentalis specifically, we discover it's shaped like this instead. Considering the complexity of the whole head, you can imagine just how much room there is for error. But I wanted this accorche to be as accurate as humanly possible, so I compared my way through numerous diagrams, so you don't have to. Number four, musculature informs facial topology. It's commonly understood that edge loops should encircle the mouth and the eyes for an animation-friendly character model. And in spending time building the muscles for this project, it clicked for me that these edge loops correspond to underlying musculature, namely the orbicularis oris and orbicularis oculi. Such topology is best for facial deformation. Number five, the curves of Spee and Wilson. When modeling the skull, I realized for the first time that the teeth actually curve, both from the side and from the front. From the side, it's called the curve of Spee, and from the front, the curve of Wilson. Before this project, I just assumed that the upper and lower teeth met at a flat plane. Special thanks to my dentist friend for informing me about this terminology. And one more bonus tip. It's really more of a public service announcement. Researching anatomy gets real quick. Over the course of this project, I realized I have no problem looking at drawn, sculpted, or rendered anatomy but a photograph will stop me in my tracks. So if you get into anatomy image Googling, just be aware that you might see some things you can't unsee. Well, I hope these tips have clarified some things for you about facial anatomy and keep an eye out for the in-depth portrait course to come.